Howdy everybody, it's little Rhonda Lee. Welcome to another Scrappy Happy Hour. And another uh, design team video for Tupelo Designs LLC. Um, before we get started here, I want to say cheers to everybody. Get your drinks. And I am having a screwdriver today. A screwdriver with uh, some of those um, moonshine cherries. So anyway, cheers. Okay. What I want to do today, I'm really excited because um, last week I started um, on a tray, one of these wooden trays that you could get at the store. Um, they come in a set, they're the wooden um, tray set, and I don't know if you guys saw, but they have, um, these were the rest of them here, they have a new set with scalloped edges now in the store also. So you should check that out. You have a choice now between uh, this this type or the um, with the handles or the one that's just scallops all the way around. So anyway, um, what I did uh, last week was I tried the crackle paint technique on on the tray and it came out really good. So there you go. There was the end result. And uh, the only thing else I did to it was I got some um, Tim Holtz Distress Inks and um, I just kind of, uh, I think I used the, uh, what is it, vintage photo color and just like toned down the white a little bit, you know, using um, the brush um, and putting some of the ink on there. And I really like the look of that. So um, the idea here is that it's going to be a gift set, a masculine gift set for a guy. And so what I did also was I used the Tim Holtz fabric that you can get in the store also. And I just covered some thin chipboard there. And my idea is that this could like, you know, go in the bottom of the tray and and it'd be like a little tray for um, a man to like, you know, when he comes home to put his change in out of his pockets and his, you know, stuff out of his pockets and his wallet and everything in, in this tray. It could be like on his bedside table or something. So um, that's what I'm going to complete today. What I decided to do is I am I distressed and crackled uh, this piece of chipboard, and I'm going to glue that onto the back, the bottom of the um, the fabric piece like that. Okay. The reason is is because you're going to see that I decided that I I didn't want to really cover this up. But I liked this too, so I want it to be an option that can be removable. So when you flip this up, it won't look so ugly then. <laughs> you know, it'll match. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put a little ribbon before I glue it between um, those two pieces so that you have a pull tab. And the ribbon I'm using is also from um, Tupelo Design Store, and it's the, um, let's see... AC American Crafts maybe and it's this um, polka dotted brown like gross grain ribbon really inexpensive really handy so I just took a piece of that and uh, glued it like that and I'm going to glue that between uh, on the edge between the, this like that so that there'll be a pull tab so that's what's going on with that. I'm going to do that. And then what, what I uh, also thought I'd add to it is I just went to the dollar store and I got this like um, two-year planner. It's just a real thin two-year planner. And it has like a plastic cover on it, which I just took off for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue uh, matching Tim Holtz fabric onto it and then put it back within its plastic um, sheath. So then this uh, little planner can go inside the tray and it fits perfectly and underneath the um, like this part so that they can lift that up and you know have a planner under there and also I am going to finish crackle painting this pencil that'll match the crackle painted tray and I also already crackle painted um, this matching frame came out really neat I like it it didn't have glass in it <laughs> So, but um, yeah, and then I might embellish something here on, on the frame also. So it'll be like a little gift set for a man, okay? So, let's see what uh, I come up with, with uh, embellishing that 
frame in a minute. So I think first of all what I'll do is go ahead and glue this part here. So I'm just going to use the um, Eileen's Quick Dry Tacky Glue which is really good for this and it has that new lid that you can um, keep it um, standing up so that it's ready to go. I got that from uh, Tupelo Designs also. So I like this glue because it works really quick. <laughs> it dries very quickly. And it's very strong too. Okay, that ought to do it. I'm going to try to center that in the middle there. Okay. And I like to use my new brayer. Yay! I got this from Tupelo Designs also. I've been always wanting one. They're so handy. My table is uh, a little wonky. So that sucks. And yes, uh, the, the music is bird songs, courtesy of the birds today, from my friend Victor from the Ukraine. Hi Victor, thank you so much for sending me the bird sounds. It's very nice and very um, relaxing. Calm me down a little bit. <laughs> Everyone needs to calm down a little bit once in a while. So that's a good thing. Okay, so I glued that on. There you go, that's what that looks like. I think that looks better than, you know, just it was there before so oh yeah I forgot to put this between <laughs> okay let me see here it's gonna go on this part here so I'm just gonna lift that up and stick it under there real quick before the quick dry quickly dries okay there we go no problem just like that so now that, you know, there's like a little pull tab to be, make it easier to um, pull that out of the tray. <laughs> like, see how that, that is? So it's like right here. So then you can just go like this and pull that out easily. Okay. So that will work. Okay, now I'm going to cover the um, planner. I already cut out the material, the Tim Holtz material, game pieces, um, to fit, so all I have to do is make some room. <laughs> all I have to do is glue the fabric to it. I left a little extra on the ends because I want to uh, fold the ends in like this on, on each of the covers. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use just um, like it's this is just like the store brand, cheap brand of, of uh, Mod Podge. I'm just going to smooth this on, be good, because I want it to stick really good, I don't want it, you know, to be fraying on the ends or anything like that, so I'm going to do a nice thick coat, sounds like mockingbirds, <laughs> I love mockingbirds. Alrighty, 
So I got it all coated. Hope I didn't glue the pages to the cover though. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to. Alright. It must be a mating call or something. <laughs> the mockingbird mating call. <laughs> okay. about right I hope so I'm going to put some glue here Fold that over the uh, inside of the cover. Just like that. Pretty good. I think I might need to trim some of the, a little bit of this off. Get even with the other side. Okay. pieces it's gonna go back into its plastic cover so you know but I did want it to be as close to the right size as possible before putting it back inside that so, get a wipe and wipe up some of this glue before I glue something down I don't want to go down So that looks pretty good. So there you go. That's the little planner. So let me get this. This is the plastic thing that was around it. Hopefully it'll fit back in. Cut some more little pieces off here. Okay. that it might be, you know, too bulky now. You can just take a little working with it. 
or I could just omit the uh, plastic cover altogether. But I'm still going to attempt to try it out. fit they had going on there. So I don't know if I'm happy with this, actually. I might have to go back to the drawing board. But... Hmm. Oh, I guess it's flattening out. It's not too bad, but I don't know. I have to think about that. But I'm happy with that, really. But you get the idea of, uh, you know, like the options you have there. And you could even put um, a label under here. Which I thought I had here, but maybe not. Okay, so there we go. Here's the tray now. And then you just pull this little tab and then you can put this little book under here. It fits perfectly in there. Put that back down like that. Okay. So that's that part. I like that idea. That's what I need. Handy. A little hiding place under there. Okay, so um what I need to do now is, on the frame, I still need to distress it like I did the tray to get take out, you know, the, the real harsh white and um, make it look, you know, more distressed. So, I'm just going to do that real quick. In fact, let me get my, um... My other distressing um, sponge. Hang on. Much better. This is the one designed by Mike. This, uh, Mike makes these, and they're really, really nice. So I'm going to use that instead. By the way, they have all the, the um, these uh, Ranger Distress inks and all the colors in those little, um, the little ones now. And it's really neat. You can get a whole collection of those. And I think they have the tins too. To store them in. Oops. going crazy. Okay. So what I'm doing here is just basically just, you know, adding a little bit of stress to it. Just kind of give it a little brown worn look to it. And it really does kind of bring out the cracking. I think it really adds just that extra final finishing touch to it. And you can use any distressing color that, you know, you like. Okay. So there's the frame, and then I have to finish the pencil. I want to do the pencil um, in the crack technique also, so I've painted it in the um, brown bottom coat like I used before, and I used the soy paint in cocoa from Tupelo Designs. Really inexpensive, really good paint. I really like this. And then after putting that on, on all the stuff that I crackled, 
Uh, then I use the Fresco Finish by Paper Artsy Crackle Glaze. This stuff is foolproof. If I can crack, anybody can, because I never could before <laughs> using this, so I'm sold. So then I put a layer of that on and let that dry. And um, then my final coat is the Fresco Finish um, Chalk Opaque here, which is really great too. So the idea here is that I'm going to now do the last stage, which is add the um, opaque chalk white to the pencil and it should crack. <laughs> right? Okay, I'll try. some paint on that. The thing is, I put the... This has been drying since last night, the crackle paint, so I just really wasn't sure if that was still going to crack or not. And I'm still not sure. <laughs> they say let it dry first, so yeah, it's dry. So, you know, maybe it's going to work. I don't know. So, we'll see. I'm going to um, get the, um, get my heating tool to speed up the process. And see if we can get some cracking going on. Like it is. It looks like it's definitely cracking. Okay. Uh, I think it could dry some more and get some more cracking going on, probably. But, anyways, that's the idea. So, in the pencil, then, you know, I'll sharpen it and stuff, and I'm... Um, it's just going to go under here with the uh, with the little planner, right under there, like that. Okay. Okay. So, remove some of this stuff. And now, I just want to kind of embellish the frame a little bit. And the, the way this frame is, is... It came with this little stick in the back, and it just goes in that hole, and that's what, like, stands it up. So I'm just going to remove it right now, if I can. Okay. So, uh, let's see. What am I thinking here? I have one of these metal pieces, kind of steampunk-looking thing. I was thinking of putting that on there, maybe. Or... I have um, some gears that I cut out with uh, my die. I thought I could maybe, you know, uh, emboss using some of this um, the um, stamp pendas. Got this from the store also, and this is the embossing powder. Um, it's like a variety pack. I, I'm not sure what they call this one. Uh, it's frontage, you know. It's that frontage stuff. So there's a, a, a few different kinds of 
embossing powders. One has glitter, like white, shabby sheet kind of white with gold, and one is like a uh, powder blue with gold, and one is um, white with like a pink, a baby pink. And then there's um, these two metallic -y ones. I really like them. And this is a very um, coarse embossing powder. So you get a lot of dimension. And um, it's really neat. It really looks like metal. You see the two I'm, I'm going to take out of here. You see how granular that is? So what I like to do, um, move that for a second. When I um, emboss something bigger like this, you know, um, I like to use uh, one of these instead of a stamp pad. It's, it has a, it's like a dauber. And this isn't, this particular one isn't from the store, it's from my stash, but they do carry uh, ones just like it that do the same thing. Okay, and I'll put everything down below. Um, I'll link everything in the description box and uh, a supply list and everything. So it's really simple when you have one of these because, uh, you, you know, you just can go right on over the whole thing quickly. And that'll give uh, your um, embossing powder something to stick to, of course. So I'm just going to do, I think, like three, three of these gears. And let me get a piece of paper real quick. Get something. paper. And these. I don't know if that's soaked in all the way or not. I'm going to put a little more on. Just be sure. This is just like, I cut these out of like a real thin chipboard kind of stuff. Alright. So. First I'll do, use this one kind. And this one. Sometimes you have to do a couple coats with this kind of um, coarse embossing powder. And it'll tend to want to blow off. So a good idea is to get some tweezers. I'll be right back. Okay. And you'll want to start by um, heating it from the bottom first so that you don't blow everything off right away. See what I'm doing here. Trying to get it started, which is a little tougher on this chipboard than paper, but it'll work. And then go on top. And you'll see it starting to kind of melt together. I think I need a lot more embossing powder. Mm 
There it goes. See how that is. Probably could use another coat. Let's see. Let me think about it. It's not, really, it's not so bad. Because this has like little black flecks in it with the um, metallic, so it's supposed to look like that. I think that kind of looks awesome, actually. So I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to do the other two with the other powder and see how they come out and then decide what I'm going to, if I'm going to uh, recoat that one or not. So, so I got these two I think I better put that embossing ink on them again. <laughs> uh -oh, which one was I using? This frontage stuff is really fun to emboss with, it really is. It's really neat when you see it melt and look like turn into metal, like molten metal. Okay. Okay. They should be coated pretty good. Sometimes I like to just pat it and so it more of a little stick. Hmm. I just was thinking that maybe I should coat it again right now, but I guess not. Wait till I cross it once and then try it again. I'm just going to put the rest back in. Okay. Just add some heat to it again. There's how that one turned out. Okay. Which is um, a slightly different color than the first one. See the difference there? So that looks pretty cool. So, I mean, in itself, that's a pretty cool effect the way it is. If that's, you know, what is okay with you or, you know, whatever, you can just use it like that or you can. Um, do another coat. 
which I think I'm going to do, especially on, on this particular one, just to, and just to show you too how it'll look then. So you just redo that whole technique, just get your um, embossing ink, put it right on over what you already did. your powder to see me blowing that all over the place. <laughs> okay. Here we go again. together. I'm talking about. That's more what I had in mind. There. See that? See how much different that looks now. It's more coated. I love it. So yeah, so don't um, think you did anything wrong if you use some of this stuff and the frontage, these coarse ones, and uh, you do, you know, you coat your thing and you uh, do it and it's not completely covered. That's to be expected with this kind. You just need to do a couple coats. You could even, I could even go back and do a third one and really get it even, you know, more coverage or whatever. But I, I really like the way that looks. I think that's awesome. Yeah, love that stuff. Isn't that cool? So here's the other one, and it's not as much coverage, but you know, it's not a bad effect, really. I mean, it just depends on what you like. Um, so I'm really not so sure what I'm, I'm going to do to embellish, this, uh, embellish the frame right now. I don't know. I have some metal pieces um, like that, and... You know, and of course these that I did. I'm thinking something like on the lines of steampunk or something. Um, and I do have some, you know, metal ones also. So I don't know. I really can't decide. Um, I also 
Where is it now? Hmm. I had this little um, piece that says art in its like in little squares, so I was thinking that might be cool. But um, anyhow, um, I'll probably just you know glue something down to do with the steampunk thing here, like that, and uh, call it a day. I think that would would match the tray really well. So it would be a whole gift set with the frame and the tray, a little like, um, I guess they would call it like a valet tray or something. And then also the um, two-year calendar book underneath here and the um, pencil too. So just a little, you know, just a little gift to give to a guy, your father, or your husband or boyfriend or, or your brother or, you know, your uncle or something like that um doesn't look you know too girly or anything like that so um yeah so there's my uh my project i hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something from it um i will link to um the products i used and um everything down in the description box and don't forget you guys that uh, uh until midnight central time tomorrow night uh, thursday night um, they're having um, a sale at Tupelo Designs LLC on all the stencils. It's 10% off. Just use the code STENCILS10. Just put that down when you check out. Uh, when you get to the checkout part and you hit checkout, then you'll see a place to put in, enter the code STENCILS10, and you'll get 10% off um, all the stencils in the store. And that's good until Thursday night, midnight central time. Okay, so take advantage of that. It's a good, it's a really good sale. And uh, thank you guys for watching and subscribing. And uh, if you have any questions or um, I can help you with anything, please leave me a comment below. And I will answer your question as soon as I possibly can. And uh, that's about it for now. Um, next week, I'm going to be probably making um, my design team project. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be a little mini album made from that yesterday paper collection and all um, the embellishments and, and stuff. So that ought to be fun. It'll probably be about a three-parter. So um, I'll look forward to seeing you then, okay? All right, till next time. Bye.